Welcome back to the program and turning now to the power of art as a means of self-expression, protest and celebration. My guest tonight is an artist who's helped people across the globe become artists as well. JR, as he's known, is an artist in public spaces where you can interact with passers-by. He started with graffiti art as a teenager in Paris and then he began pasting huge photographs that he had taken literally anywhere on buildings, billboards, vehicles and doors. In 2011 he received the prestigious TED Prize in California and he won $100,000 to fund a special wish a way to change the world. So JR decided that his wish was to create a project called Inside Out. The photographer handing the camera to his subjects and letting them post their work wherever they want. More than 130,000 of these photos have been popping up in more than 100 countries. And JR recently came into this studio to talk about his own story and his latest project now the subject of a coming documentary on HBO called Inside Out, The People's Art Project. JR, welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome to your pictures. Welcome to this amazing uh, set. What is this all about? Why did you decide to poster huge pictures all over the world? You know, I started from graffiti. As when you do graffiti, you write your name to say, I exist. When you paste a photo of someone, you put up his face to say, he exists and then the journey started. It's really fascinating and I was fascinated by what you did in Sierra Leone because you were in this slum area. Again, I've covered Sierra Leone, I saw it during the worst of the Civil War and you always feel so sorry for those youngsters who are condemned to mm. being beggars, being robbers and, and, and feeling that they are nothing. How exactly. did they feel when you then made them somebody? You know, Sierra Leone or Liberia, or the different place I went for that project named Women Are Heroes, was really amazing because I was, I was waiting for people to tell me this is not a place for art. This is not a place for photos on wall. But I found the exact opposite. People were like, please do it here. Please, we want to show the image of us. We want to, you know, show some dignity on the wall. And it was about women there that most of the time suffer from conflict but survive the conflict. And so I wanted to highlight them. I'm going way. to play a little bit of the documentary which is about to air on HBO about Sierra Leone. Lion Bays in Freetown. The group of boys that lived under a bridge. The community called them robbers, thieves, outlaws. They didn't even know their names. We pasted their faces along the bridge. It had a very strong impact. For the first time, the boys had an identity. And I just think that's so important, this issue of identity that you yeah. keep bestowing on these faceless, nameless people. So, you know, in, in, in this case in Sierra Leone, I went there in 2007. When I started Inside Out, it's people themselves who did the project. So what we just saw is actually the people there in Sierra Leone who heard about my project and who's like, all right, he came here in 2007, but now we want to do it ourselves. That's the issues we want to highlight. And I've never been back since, but they've done it. And, and, and I'm amazed to see that. So tell me about Inside Out, because that is your, your campaign at the moment, your project at the moment. You've brought it here to New York City yeah. in Times Square. Yeah. And people are just you know, amazed <laughs> to be walking over the sidewalk with yeah. these huge, giant poster-sized faces on the ground. What is Inside Out? Inside Out, it's basically a project where you can express yourself. You don't have to wait for me to come in your community to do it. I, I've done that for more than 12 years, and then I realized that if I switch the concept, I could let what the people there? take their photos, print it for them, either on a photo booth truck, like here in Times Square, either I would send it back to them wherever they are in the world, and that, that's how the project in Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone for example, happened. Uh, this, this, so you brought your own sort of printing Exactly, booth, and then people, you know, lined up for, for hours. Yeah, when, when it's the case of the booth, yeah, when it's online, you can send it and wait for it to come back. Then it prints in a couple of seconds, and either we ship it at your home directly, and then you paste it. So here in Times Square, we had the authorization by Times Square Alliance to cover the entire ground. Look at this sign. It's paste incredible. Here. People were like, no way, I can paste here. Said, yeah, of course. And it's all about the interaction when you look at it. It's and you, all about you got onto the biggest billboard there too. Yeah, the amazing thing is that there was an empty billboard and the owner said, you can have it. 
And, and this is not selling anything. It's not sponsored by any brand or any corporation. It's just about people's message. It, it seems to be a joyful project. People want to help you, want to be involved. It's true because I got like amazing group of volunteers, people coming from all over the world and people, New Yorkers who came and helped us every day. You know, it's not about how beautiful is the photo, it's about the interaction. We live in a world of social media where all interact with social media, but when we are back to a real interaction of like, hey, let's paste together, can you pass me the brush? Wait, I want to paste here. Oh, look at my face, can you take a photo? Then you're back into interaction. Human Imag relations. Exactly, imagine that in Sierra Leone, like you just mentioned, or or the hundreds of countries that inside that have been in, in less than a year and a half. Yeah. Some of the places that really struck me were some of the most troubled places. Uh, for instance, you posted a lot of pictures up on the dividing wall between Israel and the West Bank, between Israel and the Palestinians. Mm. What was that? Was that sort of like the cliche of, of here's a wall and we're just going to show how we're all together or not? So that was when I was still photographing myself. That was, I was pretty young at the time, I was 23rd, I was uh, in 2007. And basically, this was photos of Israeli and, and Palestinian doing the same job. Mm -hmm. So I pasted the wall on both sides, but I also pasted in cities. And people would come to me and say, what are you doing? And I would show them my book and say, no, this is, you know, this is just an art project. Oh, okay, okay, but who are those people? This is two taxi drivers. One is Israeli, one is Palestinian. Then there would always be the silence. Because they and couldn't I, tell the difference. Exactly. And so, basically, where people told me, you're going to get you know, kidnapped or arrested or killed for doing that, people were laughing because they couldn't see who is who. And then they would, you know, they would say, OK, let's try on another one. And I would paste another couple of portraits. And they wouldn't recognize also. So by derision to art and a little bit of naiveness, maybe, you achieve certain things that you know shows you that the limit is not necessarily when you seek there it is remarkable and then you know a lot of joy a lot of cooperation in places like this but a little bit of resistance in tunisia for instance after the arab spring the inside yeah. out went to some of those countries yeah. and i was struck by the one in tunisia whereby sure they put up these fabulous posters of young ordinary tunisians replacing and often, ben ali's yeah, photos ben ali replacing the <laughs> dictator tell me about your description of the space that they had for these pictures. You know, it was amazing because this was the first big inside out. So I went there to witness it, but I was not part of it. I just went there, look at those young Tunisians pasting their photos everywhere, covering the portraits. And they had a lot of reactions from the community, from the people, because people didn't know how to interact with those photos. Who are those portraits? Are there new dictators? We never saw art on walls. What is art? What do you mean by that? So their first reactions were to take it down. But what was really interesting, I thought this was a failure, but um, a man came and said, look guys, you have the right to paste on the wall. Sure, they have the right to take it down. That's democracy. And we're just enjoying it for the first time. And he was right. Well, it's interesting that you're explaining to me because I was like, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Why do you care whether pictures of ordinary Tunisians are up there? Why were people pulling them down? That shows you how much powerful is in, you know, is an image in the street. And out there, people, it was the revolution just happened. People, there was no control in the street. People, they were just paranoid that something new happened. They had one face for, you know, years. And now that they could get back their wall, they at least had the, the freedom of speech of saying who should be on it. And you know what? They're completely right. And that interaction was beautiful. It was really like interesting discussion. And they managed to continue pasting, but they had first to explain to everyone in the street. So it was really interesting how you have, with art, you have to find the time to explain and, and, and do it with the people. What touched you the most? Uh, what made the biggest impression on you in this project? You know, for years, I have been going into those places. And people would tell me, yeah, but you decided to go there. Maybe they want it, maybe they didn't want it. By not going there, I'm just sitting at home and I'm like, look, it's happening in 10,000 cities as we're talking, in 100 countries, and it's the people who decided where, in really rich places, in really poor, in school, in, in a conflict zone, a guy in Iran would go in jail for that, a guy in Russia would get arrested. They really took those images to another level. It became their project, and I'm just the enabler. So inside that became like a platform. That, that's what's really amazing me in it. And I have to ask you, because you're sitting inside in my studio, why are you wearing glasses <laughs> and why do you go by the name JR, which is not your real name? Exactly, because you know, when I started, I started as a graffiti writer, so you have to hide. And most of the projects I've done throughout the years were without authorization. And um, 
when I started putting faces of people, I was like, why would I put my name in front of it? It's about their name. So I stayed in the shadow. And when I'm in Times Square, everyone can come to me. I take photos and I walk with people even in the communities, but I don't see what I would gain from being recognized in the streets uh, uh, when I walk outside. So can I, can I see take your off. eyes? You can see them right after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JR. Thank you. Nice to meet you. you